I'm Cheryl Waters, and you're tuned in to the Midday Show on KEXP, where the music matters. And I'm sitting out in the gathering space here in the KEXP studios in Seattle. And I have to pinch myself right now because one of my favorite artists and her band are standing right in front of me about to play live music, the first live music we've had here in the KEXP studios in over a year and a half. And I can't think of a better artist to help us celebrate our love of live music. And I'm so excited to introduce Ambar Lucid live on KEXP. From the mushroom guy, he said it's time to say goodbye to your ego. He said my surroundings will fly. It's time to say goodbye to everything. You know. Magic mushroom stands in my soul. Thank you. 
two, three, four. I hear you say my name as soon as I walked out the door. You've got the kind of face that truly I'd love to adore. Thank you so much, Ambar Lucid, live here on KEXP, here from our studios at Seattle Center. And Ambar just played Listen, that was from 2018. And you also heard Questioning My Mind, that comes from the 2020 release, Garden of Lucid, and then The Door and Get Lost in the Music from her latest EP. And I'm very excited to have you here Ambar, music really does feed the soul. I feel so nourished after hearing that live music, my first in a very, very long time. It's such a pleasure to have you here today. Thank you. It's such a pleasure to be here. Thank you so much for coming. You know, it's been stunning to watch your evolution as an artist over the last five years. I mean, from your delicate bedroom recordings, Dreaming Lucid, to this fantastically produced EP, Get Lost in the Music. And you said that your passion for music is part of your soul and something that you were born with. And I'm wondering, when did you begin to realize that, do you think? I think probably the second that I was able to perceive music as a thing, um, even as a little girl, like I can vividly remember just feeling a fuel in my soul, just feeling very inspired just by watching people perform, listening to music that excited me. It's always something that has motivated me creatively my entire life. Just a feeling of intense passion for music. And from what I understand, you taught yourself how to play instruments. And my God, that voice. When did you know you could sing like that? Um, so I haven't always been a good singer, but I've always been very passionate about singing. And I don't know, it's always just brought me joy and I've always just went with it. And um, I think, you know, I, I really started to understand that um, singing was something that I really enjoyed doing and wanted to become better at. I would say like in my early teens. Early on you were releasing records online, or excuse me, releasing songs online yourself. And then you went into a studio to create this new album. And you really did an amazing job when you were just doing it by yourself. What's it been like to have more resources to expand the sound of your music and collaborate with other people and play with a band? Tell me a little bit about the experience of making this latest EP. Um, it's been a wild journey, honestly. I feel like 
I, I'm constantly reinventing myself and discovering new things about myself as a creative, um, experimenting with things like my in my creative process and trying to understand myself as a songwriter and just as a creative in, in general. Um, but writing this last EP, honestly, I feel like in the process of writing Get Lost in the Music, um, I like kind of almost like became conscious and like woke up from um, a like just a dark cloud that I was in um, during the pandemic. And I honestly feel like I opened up doors for myself to be able to actually enjoy music, to be able to enjoy life. I um, This last EP was kind of um, a period in my life where I was just allowing myself to enjoy things. And I feel like, you know, since the beginning of writing this EP and now, life has been really different and it's been more colorful. And I feel like through these songs that I wrote, I manifested a more joyful and just fun perception of life. And, and um, the reflection of that is made obvious now um, after releasing the EP, which is nice. It's been a really cool experience. Well, Get Lost in the Music came out at a time when I think a lot of us really needed that gift of joy, and it sounds like it was not only a gift to those of us who are your fans, but also to yourself. Yes, definitely, for sure. Well, you write and sing um, with bilingual lyrics. It's so seamless, and it's hard to notice, actually, when you switch from English to Spanish and back. Is the language of your lyrics intentional when you're writing the song, or is it just kind of an organic flow? It's usually organic, but I, I do it in, intentionally. It's it's very easy for me to write in Spanglish because I speak in Spanglish a lot. So, um, you know, I, I enjoy creating bilingual songs, but it's it's just kind of like in the moment where a sentence will easily flow in, Sp in Spanglish for me just because I'm so used to doing it. Um, the title track from Get Lost in the Music, which we heard today, is instantly caught our attention here at KEXP, and we just can't play it enough. And it's got that kind of retro psychedelic intro, and then it falls into that deep electro funk groove. And I'm wondering, are there any artists that sort of influence the sound of that song and this and the songs on this record? Yes, many different artists influenced this record, but I would say the number one influence that I always fall back to is Pink Floyd. Um, it's funny how they just somehow in different phases of my life, I always find myself kind of just obsessing over their creativity, especially like Sid Barrett. Um, and I feel like as an artist, I always aim to be as timeless and as soulful as they were in creating. So I, I, I always keep them in mind whenever I'm working on any project. I love how many influences just seep out through your music and you can connect with so many audiences that way. I really just can't stop listening to your songs enough. And I actually kind of came a little late to the game and with your last record and got to go back and discover some of your early stuff. And it's fun to think um, when you were here with Mon Laferte and just playing with you and a guitar. And it's been so fun to watch your sound grow and watch you play with other people. You've also been so open about sharing you and your family's experiences through your art and from the beautiful documentary, Llegaron Las Flores, about you and your father's reunion. You'd been apart for many, many years when you got to see him again. And I'm wondering if you can talk about the level of honesty in your music as an artist and the importance of it to you. Yeah, I feel like something that I've always tried to keep in mind is uh, as an artist I honestly and accurately and genuinely representing myself for who I truly am because what I do always reflects back to me like you know I have to hear my songs forever I have to hear the, the lyrics that I write the chords that I choose for a song the message that I choose to portray out to the world, like I'm reflecting an image that gets reflected back to me. So it's very important for me to be honest so that I can be proud of my work and so that I can feel fulfilled. And also I, I've always felt just a natural calling of needing to be myself for the sake of 
inspiring the collective, everyone in the world or whoever comes across my music. Um, it's very important for me to be myself and to stay true to my art and, and express myself in a way that, it's, that is honest so that I can inspire other people to do the same. Well, on that topic, it was very emotional in the documentary to hear your mother talk about how your music inspires so many people and it even inspires her and that she listens to those songs every day for inspiration. And it just shows the wide audience of people who are listening. And of course, she's your mother, but she makes the point to say, I listen to this music and these songs really make a difference to me. Even though you're my daughter, I would still be listening. That has to ha feel really great. Yeah, it feels amazing because, you know, I've always known that I wanted to be an artist even as a child and, and it feels good to finally be in a place where one, I enjoy so much from the bottom of my heart creating um, the music that I create, but also being able to provide something valuable to others. Um, and to be able to do that for my mother, like it definitely just shows me, it gives me validation on me as a creative and, and um, trusting the process because it, it has a purpose. I, my music has a bigger purpose than just simply creating sounds. Like there's energy behind it. And um, if you're receptive to the messages, there's, there's um, just inspiration and guidance. Well, more and more people are discovering your music every day and your new record is out on 300 Entertainment. You recently made your TV debut on the fun Netflix series, Elite. I can't believe how gorgeous that performance is and just the whole vibe and the outfit you were wearing. That had to be so fun. And it's just really thrilling to see your star rise after your years of work and especially for us after the past year and a half that we've had. It's just so, so joyful and validating to see your music. And I'm wondering how you stayed motivated through the pandemic time. Were you keeping busy making music? I was not. I actually did not write much music. I, I don't think I was writing at all during the pandemic. I was actually very lost because um, I got very used to working a lot and traveling and touring and then the world just kind of became quiet. Like I, it felt like I was in like a dark room creatively and I was living in Jersey too. So I had just moved out of, out of LA. Um, and I, I had to figure something out cause I was lost in like a creative block and, and it made me really depressed and I got myself out of it by one starting vocal lessons and, and working towards evolving a skill that I'm very passionate about. And, and also going to therapy, um, helped me find my light again. That's wonderful. Well, you mentioned that you went back home to Jersey, and I know you moved out to L.A. at a very young age. It seems like you really were laser-focused on what you wanted to do. Tell me a little bit about moving out there so young and, and what that experience was like and the support that you had both at home and moving out to a new city so far away from home. Yeah, whenever I look back on it now, I'm honestly really impressed with myself that I was able to get myself to live in Los Angeles at 17, not coming from a family that like with any artists or or like, I don't know, it's just it's so crazy and trippy to think about now. But I'm, I'm really glad that I was so focused and determined and and motivated. And I'm I am happy that I just had what I wanted very clear because um my persistence is what led me here. My persistence of of knowing that I wanted to be an artist and and all and pursuing it. Um, as soon as I got the opportunity, when I was yeah, when I was seventeen, um, when I was about to go into my senior year, I realized that I, I wasn't really going to be doing much in school my senior year, and I was like, I can spend that time pursuing my art. And somehow was able to convince my mother to let me move out there, um, thanks to my manager. And um, yeah, I mean. I, it's been a wild ride. And what's crazy is that I feel like I just recently like woke up because I feel like I was in some kind of cloud of just sadness for, for a long time. Um, and now like I'm like, holy, oh my God, how did I get myself here? But I'm enjoying it. I love music, so this is really cool for me. But um, yeah, I, I'm genuinely impressed with past version me, how we got ourselves here. 
<laughs> well, I mean, you've put an enormous amount of effort and hard work into it. You've taken a lot of risks, and it's so happy to see where you've gotten today. Do you feel that you're in a peaceful place and able to live your life and create your art on your own terms? Yes, definitely, for sure. I love to hear that. Well, we're so delighted to have you here at Ambar Lucid live here at KEXP. And what's next for you? More music, more shows. Um, yeah, I'm always going to be here making more music. <laughs> yes, we love that. Well, thanks so much for joining us again. What an incredible session that was. I can't wait to see you again live. And you're going to be heading out and doing some shows. And I hope that things bring you back to Seattle. I actually heard that, um, I actually was going to say, the stars bring you back to Seattle. It reminded <laughs> me, I heard that you're into astrology. I think we might share the same sun sign, Capricorn. Yes, I'm a Capricorn. Yay. Does, do you, does that, uh, it seems like a lot of influences make their way into your music. And it seems from watching your videos that there's a little bit of influence. But do you find that works its way into your art? Yes, definitely. Every time um as i think um since the last year every single session that i am in i'm always channeling into the planets the zodiac signs the elements all astrology stuff is being mixed into all the music that i write well check out ambar lucid all the music all the videos you will want to watch them over and over and over again and i can't wait to add this video to your collection and again thank you so much for being here yeah, thank you for having me. It was lovely speaking to you. Ambar Lucid live on KEXB, and we want to thank your band so much. They sounded wonderful. Thank you. Shout out Lucid. Yay. You're listening to KEXP Seattle. Discover new music at listenerpoweredkexp.org.